from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Atomic batteries to power. Dominating with Dawson. Dominating with Dawson. Dominating with Dawson. I need some jargon. Oh, oh. it's Ben. It's Ben. It's Ben. Hi, um, Ben. I'm so excited, AKA, Ben, too. AKA Mr. Jargon. Mr. Yeah. Jargon. That, ben, that's, just, that, that's just what everybody at work calls me. Yeah. Mr. Jargon? Why do they yeah. call you Mr. Jargon? I don't have any idea. It's the weirdest thing. They can call me anything. They call me Mr. Jargon. <laughs> Just, nobody, nobody maybe because you, maybe because you're always jargon around. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's dad joke evening at Dominic with Dawson. Um, <laughs> so Ben, I've I've, I've heard this this uh, spoken of, and in addition to, I'd also like to know how did it happen and what do I do to get out of this? There okay. there are people who have referred to this. Um, this could be lift off oversteer part two. Uh, we're going to huh. see if see if we answer this one, because the last time we did this, we had about six liftoff oversteers before we finally got to the right answer. Let's see huh. if we can do this one in one episode, shall we? Who knows? Ben, Who knows? One of these days you're going to get me to something I've never heard of, which might be right. today. That's all right. It's not. I'm pretty sure you got this one in your repertoire. OK. <laughs> all right. Ben Dawson, Ben Dawson. What is a tank slapper? Oh, yeah. That's when you're the butt end of the car is sliding all around and the front end is the front end has traction the rear has no traction and you're sliding back and forth so um they call it a tank slapper because i think and because oh because if you're on a motorbike you're going back and forth hard enough to slap a fuel tank on the ground on either side is that what it is is that why it's no that? idea i have no idea it, it seems uh, like a weird it's it's got a hot riding um to what i think it comes from hot, hot riding anyway it's, it's where you get all loose or oversteery and the car is going back. back and forth oscillating oscillating in the rear and you're trying to catch it have it stop doing that and you can just go straight and not be about to crash i only say about to crash because i was in a tank slapper one time where it was wet and it was that fast turn at coming out of that last turn at amp that sweeper and mm -hmm. i got in somebody's diffs i got in somebody's diff sauce you're already like going almost as oh. fast as you're gonna go you're That's good you stuff. Know, you're 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 on a turn and it's wet. <laughs> so I was going back and forth and back. I know I'm talking like tossing handfuls of wheel back and forth. And I, I thought I had it, but I, when, it, when the wheel came back around, I was one rotation off of the car. Went, over straight to the wall. Bam. I was like, that's great. I just bought a race car. <laughs> Turned out we got it fixed. We got it, we, we got it fixed and back out in an hour, but I, I thought it was a really hard hit. Was, but that that's what a tank slapper is. The car was just swinging wildly back and forth. And I was like, yes, I got it. And then boom, no, you don't. Nope, ran out of talent. Yeah. Um, so, so why does it happen, and how do you get into one of these bad boys? I mean, you lose you lose traction in the rear, and it typically is going to happen. Uh, in my experience, it's going to happen at a high speed, more likely than a low speed. I mean, a low speed tank slap, or mm -hmm. you might you might wiggle one way or the other, and you catch it. But uh, I think I can maybe maybe totally off on this. <laughs> we'll probably get some some hate mail about it. But I, I think I mean I would think it has to do with speed. You have your you're losing traction in the rear, and, and I'm not sure why you why you go back and forth. I don't know enough about physics to know to get into why it happens, but I know that you know once you, once it starts happening, you got to kind of counter steer back and forth to sort of catch it, and, and hopefully you kind of start to minimize the 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 size of the oscillations back and forth. I'm not mm -hmm. sure oscillation is the right word to use, but the, yeah, I think so. But the, the the swings back and forth will get smaller and smaller as you get the car, uh, as you gain more control of the car, and get it back online. Okay, Miss Miss Vicky, Did I answer what you're asking at all. Um, <laughs> I think so. We're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit more, but Miss Vicky, have you ever had this happen to you? Have you had the back end start to wobble back and forth, left and right, left and right, left and right? Or right yeah, to left? I have. I have. Um, it's 
How it's was It's scary that? and it's a little horrifying. Um, if you're not quite exactly sure what to do, but yeah, um, first thing do don't panic <laughs> because the first thing you do normally is when you go into panic mode, the first thing you want to do is slam on the brakes and that's not good. That just makes things a little bit worse or you start to understeer. No, no, no. You don't want to do that at all. Is um, that one of your China beaches? I'm just guessing. No, no, no. that was, that was just a little out of control. Okay. Um, but no, don't, don't, don't slam the brakes. Don't, you know, try to overcorrect yet. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things that I had recently learned in, in my thing is, um, actually I just kind of lift off a little bit gradually and I, I try, what I had done actually is I kind of let the car try to correct itself. And, and it sounds weird, but I kind of let, I don't turn into it too much. I don't turn against it too much. I kind of let the wheel go a little bit and the wheels start to gradually start to straighten out a little bit. This is just what I had done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so like self, it'll sort of self-center. It'll, it'll right? try to self-center. Um, but as long as you don't slam on the brakes, you don't try to overcorrect the car. Um, you, you have a better chance of not spinning it. And if you just feel like you've lost it, um, just look where you want the car to go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right about that. Um, yeah. That, there's, there's a lot of like uh, letting the car sort of self-center and, and give in the tendency of that while you're, while you're attempting to control the car. Right. Um, if you ask, uh, if you ask somebody, Hey, have you ever had a tank slapper? And they say, no, they probably had the beginning of a tank slapper didn't catch it. And they've had a spin. Yeah. A tank slapper is just a, a tank slapper is just a, a spin trying to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and you're just you're just trying not to let it happen. So that's that's what it comes down to for me. <laughs> All right, so so w let's assume that we're in we're involved in this tank slapping, and you can't define precisely what to do. But we, I guess the the goal of the question. Well, there's two goals of the question. This is the first goal. What should you do? And and I think Vicky said pretty clearly. She she gives a gentle lift, but she doesn't just plop yeah. off the gas she doesn't mm -mm. she doesn't slam on the brake she's just kind of you know this lap is done we're not setting a personal rest on this one we're just trying to keep the car nice and happy and we'll resume this racing contest as soon as this tag slapper gets done but she kind of eases yeah. off the gas don't try and push it don't try and save it don't try and get ahead of it because god knows you're only going to get behind it and then you're going to make it worse right yeah mm-hmm yeah, those are, those are important important points that I hadn't thought of. Is, is be fairly gradual with your feet inputs. Mm -hmm. but you have to be you have to be pretty ready to be quick with your hands as far as yeah. catching and and kind of keeping up with what's going on back and forth. Still, no, don't do anything extreme with your hands. You're not trying to make big motions with your hands necessarily, but you got to be ready to kind of catch it, do some counter steer to sort of just you know counter steering back and forth a little bit is part of minimizing it and get, get, having the car get back online and stop wiggling. Yeah, I and I don't know if it's the the right way of saying it at all, but as I'm trying to let the car self correct, and I'm already kind of like maybe in a turn or something like that, I just kind of let go of the steering wheel, grab it again, let go of the steering wheel, grab it again, as it's trying to to correct itself, mm -hmm. so I have more control as the car is trying to self correct. Does that make any sense? I've done it a couple times and it really worked for me. And I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but I'm still learning how to do it. So I wouldn't say I've never done it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've certainly will let the, with the wheel kind of work, slap over my hands if it, if it needs to. Yeah. I, I don't like to let, I, I'm just trying to think back. I can't really, I can't say hundred percent sure if I do or don't do that, but I wouldn't say it's the worst thing in the world. I also pretty sure I don't like to let that much control. Of right. The wheel mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Um, Vic, I think, I think you may do that because I know how you drive a little bit mm -hmm. and if you a little to, bit, you've been riding around together for decades, uh, you know, <laughs> um, but if you were to classify you as a fast hands or a slow hands, you are a slow hands. Yeah. So, so to catch a tank slapper, you're going to need to get a little go carty, a little autocrossy yeah. and, and start going pretty quick. And you'll Fight quickly find out whether you're whether mm -hmm. you're not. But uh, I think that might be one way. And then I'd be interested 
if some of our listeners had some input on tank slappers, because we don't have a great answer yet, and we'd love to learn from you guys as well. You know why I say that? Why? Because we have a listener who wrote in. Mm-hmm. Cool. We'll, we'll call him. That's my, Todd. Favorite, that's my favorite thing. I know. It's so much fun. I love it. So we had a, uh, and this is a long one, guys. So we're going to have to sit in for a little bit. We'll call him Tyler. Uh, since his name's Tyler. Is his name Tyler? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm very secretive that way. <laughs> so this is going back to our recent episode on shift timing, when to shift and how to shift. So this is particularly right. something Vicky's working on at this point. So, so maybe she'll be able to give some comments on this. So one of the speakers on the recent episode about shift timing made the claim that you should use your sixth sense. And that was in uh, quotes to know when to shift and, uh, Tyler says he must strongly disagree. The human senses mm. are, well, are well documented in the history of giving us bad information. Anybody mm. who doubts this should check the NTSB records for pilot crashing, which is almost always fatal, and due to spatial disorientation. Often it happens because the pilot was flying in weather conditions that prevented them from seeing, and their body told them one thing while the flight instrument said something else, and they trusted the wrong one. So getting back to car shifting or... Um, shifting of the car, the ideal time to shift is when you make more torque at the wheels and at the wheels is in bold people. So pay attention at the wheels in the next gear. Then in the current gear at the higher RPM, this point does not change in a quarter going uphill or going downhill, unless you have fuel system issues. And the exceptions are when you're in a higher gear for a shorter time and you lose more. Completely right. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I'm like, when when Alex is saying that stuff, I just sat there like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. I'm thinking we need to do like, uh, I don't, I don't know, something with Tyler. I don't know, Ben. Yeah. Let's have, let's have Tyler back on as a guest to to go through that topic again. (laughs) Tyler, you're going to have to come on with Dominic with Dawson and help us get the right answers. Hey, Tyler, Tyler, buddy, you don't have to give your real name. We'd love to have your real input because, because when, when, like, sometimes Alex was saying stuff, I was like, I'm just a dumb Latin major, but I am pretty sure it doesn't really matter if you're going up the hill and all this sort of some of the other some of the other conditionals he was saying. And also, you know, when he was saying this stuff about ah, oh, you gotta he was getting all mystical about the sixth tip and stuff. I was like, I like to check where my where my revs are. <laughs> I have I have a very set of exact criteria and references that I use for when I'm gonna shift the car, and they're all based on what uh, Tyler's talking about like we, we you know when you when you kind of peek down on the pa- power you're going to make in that gear the torque you're putting now it's time to go to the next one to refresh that that torque band and get back into mm-hmm. the meat of it so he's, he's it sounds like Tyler's exactly right to me I yep. was just uh trying to be polite on the episode <laughs> so so given that we are less than a third of the way through Tyler's tremendous write-up on this let's let's go oh, to the, let's, let's go to the end I mean we've got YouTube uh links on here we've oh, got cool. from engineering explain which is a fantastic youtube channel are we going to put this missive in the show notes with links if we do our show notes will be well over the limit for instagram but we will do something we'll come up with something <laughs> um yeah. so let's see where are we at now so and then he brings up you know several different points which are all all perfectly valid and, and definitely worth reading which i've read this thing like three or four times uh he goes into for endurance racing you want to make sure that your engine and transmission longevity are far more important than the speed and you'll almost be shifting well below peak power so you really need an extra burst to get past somebody you may want to stay in that lower gear a bit longer mm-hmm. and at the end he signs off with hope to see you on the track soon with an exclamation point and then tyler whatever your last name is i do not say last names on the podcast but anyway. not doxing anybody not doxing nope. nobody nope 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 so so what do you think guys You know, Tyler did a better job than we did. I know that. So what else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that 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 gear situation always gets me. It does. Uh, it, he, it, he's, he's exactly right. I mean, about you know keeping your revs lower than you might for a sprint race or for a time trial lap or something like that is exactly yeah. right. Does this help you get your uh, your shift timing a little bit? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Um, you know, in in my uh, situational awareness driving mm-hmm. as all of those other things start moving into was it second nature you huh? stuff you don't have to think about now i'm i'm starting to understand revs and how the rev work because now i'm not 
working with a rev light when I'm racing so much. You will be. But yeah. So I have a tendency to, to switch uh, gears lower on my revs. That was a habit, but that's a street habit. Yep. Um, because I always think that I'm over revving the engine if it goes up higher. Like, oh, no, no, that's normal. I'm like, oh, okay. I just... Well, I, re I remember this. There's two things we've got to get to. So remember when Jennifer was learning how to drive a stick? So somewhere... Either Liam said or Jennifer misinterpreted that you have to shift the car at 3,500. So Jennifer was actually racing like the first couple of races. She was shifting in the Mustang and in El Jefe and in the Capri at 3,500. It didn't matter what car it was, doesn't matter where they were. When it hit 3,500, boom, she shifts gears. So right. not optimal. Definitely not mm -hmm. optimal because, you know, we don't have a diesel that only has a torque band of about a quarter of an inch. And two, here's the point. And I think okay. this will help you. If you are willing to put on your little bands and take your ginger pills, since we will mostly be sharing cars at HPDEs now, you and I, I would mm -hmm. invite you to come out with me in the same car you're driving. And I'm not saying I am the arbiter and the definer of what is perfect, but my shifting is closer to where you want to be than where you are. And maybe if we do a few laps together, you'll see what I'm doing and try to get more towards that and hopefully better. But I think you'll see that it's not as complicated as you're making it in your head. Mm -hmm. you, you just kind of do it move on shifting is the probably the thing i focus the least on when i'm driving it's just i do it because i got to and i do it when it's time and that's mm -hmm. why that's why i think ben has trouble explaining it because ben's a very <laughs> intuitive driver and yeah. he doesn't really ponder these things to deeper levels unless he's on this podcast and he's been doing this so long he just like i, I do it when it's time <laughs> well it's that's true but also i also have pretty specific references like i like i keep saying like i want the tachometer to be here and I, you know like I, I i'm doing it with a pretty uh solid approach i think but also you're right for me it's pretty mechanical like all the stuff all the stuff that's tripping vicky up is pretty mechanical like all the foot dancing and sequencing and you know yep. all, all that crap is just uh not even, not even thinking about it I mean, unless, I, unless it's problematic, you know, unless it's we're having a hard time getting into this gear or that gear, then it can mm -hmm. prospect in the front of your mind. I mean, in an ideal world, you don't need a shift light. You can do it just by feel or by sound. It depends on what type of driver you are. But we have a shift light in all our cars just for the, you know, because we have different people in different cars. And sometimes we have new people in the cars. That's why we have a shift light. Or by so. watching your attack. Or if everybody, knows, if you don't have a shift light, but everybody knows, hey, the rule is you're shifting 5,500. You can have six if you're trying to get around somebody, whatever it is for your car. But yes. you know, that's that's kind of how we've set it up before. You know, it's like, all right, you know, we this, this thing it chips out at, you know, 6,700. We should be shifting at 65 if we're trying to pass somebody, or if you're not, you know, lower than that, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've had people tell me, hey, we want to keep the revs under down to here, even though it's not going to make it the best power because of this issue or that issue. So you have to be sensitive to what's going on with the, with the car, too, if you're adapting to the car having a problem or the car, you, a car you don't know. If somebody says, here are the guidelines for shifting. You want to be able to, to meet those guidelines. Some that, sometimes that's going to be an RPM number. So you, it's good to be able to key in on not just waiting for a shift light or hearing it by, by ear, but just me stressing, watch your tack one more time. Sorry. Yep. Tacks are good. Yep. Miss Vicky, you looking forward to the season? It's coming. I am. I am. I, I get this car done first though. Well, I mean, Which one? yeah. The Civic. The we're Hondalian. Close. Nice. Close. I want to race that car. We are so close. Bill says yeah, we're no. not close. We are close. No, Bill Bill started a joke and Mia kept me from finishing it. Oh, okay. Uh, it was not close. There is no close. There is done and not done. Yeah. Mm. And she didn't let me get there. So Yeah. Where, where do you go, Mia? That's right. My joke was trumped, truncated. Anyway, well, so cool. Thanks, Lappers and Tyler. Mm -hmm. Double and T Tyler. episode. Tyler, Tyler, come on the show, buddy. That's right. Tyler, open invitation. You want to do Dominating with Dawson? We'll do that. You want to do episode? We'll do that, too. Yeah. I, that's when I'd come to. I'll come to the Tyler episode. Oh. <laughs> Tyler, come on out. Yeah. Hank Slappers Replace with me. Tyler. No. <laughs> Replace Hank me, Slapping Tyler. with Replace Tyler. 
<laughs> oh. Uh, no. Tyler doesn't tank slap. Tyler goes faster. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me.